Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. You may remember about a week or so ago, I did a video on what Russia is proposing, their own gold and precious metals exchange. Well, there's been more and more talk about that as of late, but it may actually run into some hurdles that may be very difficult to overcome. But we're going to talk about those in this video and also the trend that could be set based off of what Russia is, is proposing and what another country is implementing. So let's explore. <laughs> Yes, indeed, Russia is not the first um, nation after all the major well-established gold and silver and platinum and palladium exchanges that are out there to produce, to uh, propose a new one. There's another country that is. But first, before we get there, let's talk a little bit about what Russia is doing as kind of a recap. I'm going to be referencing an article here from Capital.com that talks about this. You know, they promote, they propose their own precious metals exchange, provisionally called the Moscow World Standard, which is expected to join the ranks of other world-class metal exchanges. Uh, and we know what these are, London Bullion Market Association, which we're very well aware of, and the COMEX, and we also have the Shanghai Metals Exchange. Uh, but um, so the plan has been long in the making, with the country specifically highlighting that it wants this exchange to be an alternative to the London Bullion Market Association. Uh, over the past few months, Russia has become increasingly insistent that the LBMA has engaged in artificial practices by manipulating the precious metals market and keeping prices low. This in turn is seen as having a negative impact on precious metal exporters. These accusations have also become stronger since the LBMA banned Russian precious metals such as gold, platinum, and palladium as part of the international Russia-Ukraine sanctions. And I think really that is mostly what has bolstered this. Uh, there's a, an increasing division between what is known as the BRICS nations and nations of the West. And I think they're going to try to capitalize on that as they move to uh, make this happen. Uh, but it may fail, you know, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, so what do we know about this uh, this Moscow world standard um, so far? It's kind of a retaliatory gesture towards the LBMA, as I mentioned, according to the Russia Finance Ministry. It's moved its key for normalizing the functioning of the precious metals sector. The exchange will be based on a special global precious metals brokerage, which will have headquarters in Moscow and will rely on the Moscow World Standard. There is also likely a committee which will have major financial institutions and central banks from ex-USSR nations such as Armenia, Kyrgyzstan, Belarus, and Kazakhstan, which along with Russia formed the key Eurasian Economic Union. And they're obviously allies. Some uh, say that they're essentially puppet regimes of Russia. Certainly that's the case for Belarus as they are joined and actively participating in the Ukrainian um, invasion. The current plan is to peg precious metal prices to either one of the national currencies of the countries in the Union or create an entirely new currency inspired by the proposed BRICS currency. This will be used for international trade, uh, smoothening processes outside of the Union. So essentially their own version of the Euro and so that would be quite interesting. And I think that's one area that may be too ambitious because uh, I don't think any of their uh, of their nation's economies are all that good. Again, think about Russia's economy. It's about the size of Italy's. Apart from that, Russia is also trying to get other major gold producing and consuming countries such as Venezuela, China, India and Peru to support this new exchange. But China already has their own. Why would they participate in something where that essentially competes with themselves there? And that is kind of where things is, is where the arbitrage between these markets are already between the Shanghai market. In fact, for those of you familiar with this channel, you know that every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time, we anxiously await and track minute by minute, pretty much, the uh, markets as they open up in Hong Kong. 
Um, and uh, so the Eastern markets open up at 6 p.m. and we track the Asian markets there from there. Uh, but they want to compete with the LBMA. The, India has recently announced its own precious metals exchange and known as the India International Bullion Exchange, the IIBX, to compete with the LBMA as well. They are also reportedly unhappy with the latter's method of practice too. I think most of us probably agree that we don't uh, like some of the methods as far as price movements and how accounting and keeping bookkeeping with the LBMA. Uh, in fact, silver, their silver uh, coffers are quite low right now. I've done a video on that as well. According to Indian Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi, the IIBX will empower India to gain its rightful place in the global bullion market and serve the global value chain with integrity and quality. And I believe that especially considering the history of gold in India and how ingrained it is in their culture and their economy being much larger uh, than, than, um, than Russia's, I believe that their exchange will probably work. And again, it's about empowering India. And so when you think about the national ramifications, uh, it's a global competitive market. Why would India participate in what Russia is doing with gold even though Russia, again, is a, a very large producer of gold, um, you know, they, they have to interact with other nations if they want to get their gold out there. And uh, they already kind of are working through this, some of those back channels. Now, unless that exchange is utilized mainly to strengthen uh, the IIBX, if they do agree to trade with uh, Russia, uh, otherwise it will be in direct competition. And that is why I think the egos will prevail uh, especially in Russia, which means that likely um, it, it may be difficult and it very well could fail because of that. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. It just depends on what kind of cooperation does occur there. Uh, investors speculate that Russia and India have started a movement which could potentially sweep up other major gold and precious metal producing nations uh, as well, inspiring them to open up their own exchanges soon, too. And that could be too much, actually, and could flood the market and confuse the markets as well. What is the actual price? Who is the arbiter of the price? Um, and likely, probably, that could actually, that increase and flood of the market in that regards, uh, given that if each nation, each gold-producing nation had its own, um, what will that do to the price of gold? It would be very interesting to see how that plays out. Who is going to be the one who is going to be able to tell? Will there be the equivalent of a real clear politics type organization that does uh, that is, does an average of the polls out there to set the price, creating yet another institution or agency that is essentially um, utilizing statistics to average the price, and that will be the new spot price for gold and silver, uh, an average of all the polls for real clear politics, and an average of all the prices for gold and silver for this new agency because of the flood of the market of all of these uh, precious metal exchanges out there. I don't know. Um, and that's one thing that we'll just have to see if, how it plays out. And so in the early stages, Russia is, I think, actively pursuing this, especially given what happened with the, with the sanctions, uh, not only with the sanctions from LBMA, but also the G7 uh, in terms of that is concerned. And some of those other nations are kind of involved as well too. But again, it's a further widening in the gap there um, between East and West, I guess one could say. Uh, but it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. But I think it's going to uh, run into some headwinds for sure, uh, even among some of these other players that have their own national interest um, in, in play there. Uh, Russia being a large gold producer, but also they're involved with uh, within something that, uh, um, you know, that, there's a lot of nations that don't agree with what they're doing, invading another sovereign nation. And, uh, but aside from that, it's other aspects of it as well, too, that are, that are in play, um, even before that had occurred. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Interesting indeed. It could fail, uh, but it also could run into some great headwinds as well, too. We'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, 
share, comment, and subscribe.